Good afternoon, everybody. Um, just we are here very simply to talk about uh, new techniques that we are using in the district as it relates to rat abatement uh, and the prevention of. Um, rat proliferation. So we are here in Ward 6 and we are joined by our council member for Ward 6, Charles Allen, who is here. Uh, we're also joined by our DO8, uh, DOEE director and our DPW director and also Gerard Brown from our Department of Health uh, who is in charge for rat abatement uh, in the district. Uh, let me also uh, acknowledge our ANC commissioners who are here, Stephanie Zimney. Hi, Stephanie. And uh, is that Marie Claire Brown? Marie, thank you. Uh, and Bobby Pittman from ANC 1D. Is that right? Where's Bobby? No, uh, <laughs> oh, uh, sorry. What is AD? Okay. Uh, and uh, I am uh, just very happy to be able to, to talk about uh, how we are looking into all different kinds of ways uh, to make sure we're dealing with, um, with pests in our neighborhoods. Uh, we recently convened a meeting, uh, what we call a CAPSTAT, um, that was focused entirely on rat uh, abatement and the prevention of proliferation in our neighborhoods, uh, where we not only invited our our department directors, uh, but also our uh, bids, our neighborhood bids uh, across the city uh, and experts on on rats uh, to come to make sure that we were covering all uh, areas. So obviously we are going to talk about trash management uh, and other ways that the government can be uh, helpful in neighborhoods throughout the city uh, to make sure that we are um, beating back uh, rats. So with that, let me turn uh, to Gerard Brown. Good afternoon. Good, afternoon. Good afternoon. So the dry ice is not going to replace rodenticides. It's just going to be another tool in our toolbox to help us reduce the rats. The best weapon against rats is put waste in the proper place. You know, you put the trash in the trash can, put the top on it. Um, but today we are going to do a demonstration with some dry ice. Some of the DOH team um, are going to show you how we uh, insert dry ice pellets inside a, a rat barrel and the CO2 that emanates from the dry ice suffocates the rats and their home becomes their grave. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what to say to follow that. Uh, so let me turn to the council member. I'm sure he'll have the right words. I don't know how to follow that. That's fantastic. Um, but I, 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 I like the sound of it. Um, uh, Ms. Mayor, thank you very much for you and your whole team on this. Um, you know, I think you probably could end up doing a walk like this trying to focus on rats um, just about every day. But she's got a city to run as well. Um, but I'm very glad that we're out here. And it's all about, as you heard uh, Gerard Brown say, putting more tools in the toolbox. Um, I've introduced some legislation trying to help get at this to give the city and DOH some more tools. But, you know, we need them to be going as aggressive as they can. And I'm really glad they're going to help demonstrate this new tool, this new way to try to go at these rats. Um, but, I, again, I think the mayor and Mr. Brown were right. It comes down to managing our trash the right way, not having food waste that's out in the alley. Um, it also takes the partnership between our residents and the city. The city can come through this alley as many times as they want until we can work on the private property as well, having homeowners help with this fight. Um, that's the way we're going to get this. So, Ms. Mayor, thank you again thank you. for spending your time out here and focus on this. And uh, you got a partner in me working on it. Thank sure. you. Thank you. Thank you. Charles. Thank you. Charles, going to business. Business. The business. The business. The business. Partnership. Partnership. Yep. Right. Okay, so we were able to take a few questions, and I think we're going to do a demonstration. Any questions? Yes. Oh, but press questions first, and then I'll come to you, ma'am, okay? Need press questions? Well, how, how would you characterize this problem? How serious? What's the scope of the magnitude of this problem? 
Uh, well, I think you would agree that uh, if we can rent the city totally of rats, everybody would be happy about that. Uh, we know we're an urban environment. We have sewers. We have metro tunnels. We have uh, alleys. We have a growing population. We have a growing restaurant population. Uh, so all of those things require our uh, attention. Uh, we are following the number of calls that we get and requests for services as uh, some indicator of, of the problem, uh, but also the actual boroughs as the best indicator. Uh, that DOE, um, I'm sorry, that DOH finds um, when they go out on these calls. That's important too. Uh, what the council member mentioned is is hugely important. The the role that property owners themselves uh, play in this process. We of course have a team of people, and we're looking to expand the number of people available to go out on calls. We also know that many private property owners do their own pest management with private companies, uh, and we we of course encourage every Body to, to do what they can to help battle the problem. Yes, Sam. So, Mayor, I read that New York, Boston, Chicago all have used uh, dry ice and that it may be against federal regulations. What have, have you heard this? Uh, yes, we, we have heard some. Um, we assure you that everything that we are doing is according to all our regulations. Uh, we want to be uh, careful, of course, of our environment. Uh, so in addition to, um, what do you call it, rabinicide? Yes. Rabinicide? Yes. That it, rodenticide that is a poison that's used that we put down in the barrels. Uh, we're also adding uh, the ability to, to use dry ice. I'm going to ask Tommy Wells to come up and talk about all of the, the guidelines that we checked before we move forward. Thank you, Mayor. So with using dry ice, dry ice, as, um, as you heard earlier, will suffocate. It'll take the oxygen out of a, a closed, confined space and humanely dispose of a rat. And so this has been tried in cities around the country. And so currently the EPA is saying that a person can do this on their own property, that this is, you're not prevented from doing that. And a lot of times in dealing with rats, it's, it's instead of having to hire someone to come in and, or count on the city to come onto private property, which in some cases is, is appropriate, but it's a way that residents can also participate in, um, in killing rats that they find on their property in their backyard like we're going to see here. And so that's, um, that's permissible, uh, you know, with the, the EPA. How costly is, is this effort and how much uh, effort are you going to put into it? I mean, is this going to be a citywide? Well, that, that's a great question because some say that treatment of a rat hole can be as low as 50 cents. And that's, it's a lot cheaper to use dry ice than a lot of the different pesticides or poisons that are used. So it is a, um, it's a home remedy that way residents can involve for a very low cost. Hmm? And that's exactly right. It's pet friendly, that it's not a poison likely to be ingested by cats, dogs, or your, your house animals. What are the dangers if people are inspired by what they see and uh, want to do it at home? So the main concern is that, um, is that, as we all know, a dry ice, that it can burn you. And so that you need to use appropriate insulated gloves or tongs or that's best. And when you buy dry ice at, say, a local grocery store, um, they generally come with the precautions. But we all know that dry ice is so... Um, frozen in a way that it actually can burn you so that there's general precautions and things like tongs um, can keep you safe. Okay. This young lady had a question. Yes, Hi, I live on 10th and I Street Northeast and there is a big issue. I've had my backyard baited like three times. I have a house, well it's a space that used to be a house next to me numerous times, all the times people think it's a doggy park. I'm like, this is not a doggy park. Their dogs do what they need to do. Some clean up, some don't. But you still have the residue of a dog doing what he needs to do. Also, in regards to our trash, we have trash pickup twice a week, Monday and Thursday. Thursday is the recyclable day. My trash can, one of them got missing the recycle. I called 311, they like, you have to pay for it. I don't feel I should pay for it. It got messy. Trash, the trash collectors all the time, don't put your trash cans back on the curb. They throw them. They laying in the street between two cars, that's where they land. Trash sometimes comes out on when they're putting trash in. I remember if a trash man put your trash 
and it fell out on the street, they would sweep it up and throw it in the trash. Okay, so let's, ma'am, we will find out about your block and if there are some specific issues that we have on that route. I'm going to ask her DPW director to come up and talk about um, what the process should be and when you have complaints, how we handle them. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. Yep. Certainly appreciate, uh, well, first, my name is Chris Shorter, director of the D.C. Department of Public Works. Appreciate the question. Uh, we can identify your specific crew. So anytime there is a challenge uh, with a specific uh, block in terms of trash and recycling collection, uh, oftentimes we're able to identify the specific crew that services your area uh, and counsel that specific crew. So uh, we're happy to do that in your case. Uh, once we get your address and your block, uh, we'll, we'll, certainly, we'll, we'll certainly do that. Um, uh, any other question you wanted me to deal with, Mayor? I have a question. Okay. okay, hold on. Let me just make sure. So, uh, I think we're going to be walking um, on that block today, okay. so we can we can observe it and make some changes if Thank necessary. You. Yes, ma'am. What about partnership between the restaurants and the? You know, I live in an area where I have a house surrounded by restaurants, so that's a completely mega. <laughs> Issue yep. compared to someone who just has. Sure. I think you, you may have heard me mention in the beginning that part of our, I'm speaking with my back to you, so okay. you, you can turn, come this way. It may yeah, be easier. Um, if, so the question was about restaurants and how we're working with restaurants and managing waste. Uh, we started the conversation by saying one of the biggest things that we can do is better manage waste. Uh, recently, we've entered into a compactor um, a grant program in the district, and we're going to advance additional grants in the upcoming calendar year as well. Uh, we're trying to encourage more and more restaurants to participate in that compactor program. Uh, you heard uh, the council member already talk about all of the enforcement uh, actions that are at our disposal. And so while we are educating all the members of our business community, uh, we're also making sure that we have the tools and the personnel to enforce the existing problems. Uh, one recommendation that came from our stat um, was also when we uh, send our personnel uh, to locations, uh, the remedy is often we're going to give you a ticket and you better correct it. Um, sometimes the issues are more egregious and they need immediate attention. And so I need to make sure that I can have a team of people uh, who can abate those situations immediately. So we're working on that as well. You bet. What about Councilmember Allen's legislation uh, for standards for disposing trash in all these restaurants? What's your take on all of that? I'll let the council member talk about it. I can't tell you. I know every detail about his proposal, but usually they're all good. Uh, so uh, let's let's just start from that premise, and I'll have him talk about the details. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'll, I'll be real brief, but essentially um, we know, as you've heard the mayor and others have said, it's trash management, uh, managing the source. And so one of the things that we're trying to do is work in partnership where we can, um, but make sure that all restaurants, for example, um, I would love it um, if we're able to have indoor trash management. Uh, you can see how many trash cans are out here right now. That's not feasible necessarily in every single building, but it should be the goal, I think, that we uh, aspire to. Uh, and so how do we work with our businesses? How do we work with our main streets, with our restaurants, to get to a place where we can have that kind of indoor trash management? Um, how do we, again, give more tools to the Department of Health? How do we make sure that we continue to, to think through all the different issues that you've heard us all talk about to help tie them all together? Uh, that's the intent of the legislation. We had a hearing on it a couple of weeks ago uh, where we got some additional great feedback from residents and businesses uh, who came through other ideas. So from the council's perspective, we want to keep working on it, work on it certainly in partnership with the mayor and her team uh, to ideally be able to move something forward. Again, all with the goal of getting more tools in the toolbox for the city. What would be the biggest change out here? trash management what would be the biggest change the biggest change would be working with our restaurants and our businesses for example around how to store this trash uh, and you'll see that here in the alley and any other cor corridor you walk along let me ask uh, director shorter to also talk about numbers uh, so the mayor said it a bit earlier and it's absolutely right that we all have a role to play uh, in terms of managing uh, rodents and so businesses residents uh, certainly have a role to play. Our sweep team, the Solid Waste Education and Enforcement Program here uh, in Washington, D.C., and as a part of the Public Works uh, Department, has issued uh, almost 250 citations to businesses in this area uh, this year, uh, and uh, just about 400 <laughs> citations to residents. Uh, this we do 
uh, to help make sure that everyone is playing their part. Uh, I wanted to make sure we made that point clear uh, that this is not only, Joe, just an enforcement issue, uh, but I think the mayor just said a few minutes ago this is also about education. And so part of what we're doing today, and I'm really excited about, is uh, really giving an example of how we can do uh, this together and what you can do as residents um, on your own property. All right? Yeah. Okay. So you bring up SWEEP. SWEEP is both, as you say, enforcement and it's education. When is enforcement education, and when do you use education as the primary focus and not enforcement? I think I understand the question. Uh, so in terms of education, education can come in many ways. So our solid waste education enforcement program, or the inspectors uh, that make up that program, do everything from stake out public litter bins, in, in terms of the illegal dumping that happens at public litter bins, uh, to making sure that they're working with residents and businesses uh, to uh, educate them on the law and what they have to do uh, to be good partners. Uh, that said, we issue warnings, formal warnings that don't necessarily involve uh, a monetary sort of uh, uh, sort of payback, if you will, to the city. Uh, those warnings, if issue, if we issue enough, turn into fines and they turn into citations. So there is a sort of escalating. Uh, process, if you will, for our inspectors in terms of education and then enforcement. Sure. And um, I like to thank all the ANC commissioners who play a part in that as well. Um, frequently, we get complaints. Sometimes they're about businesses. Sometimes they're about our fellow neighbors. Um, and I think we can all agree uh, that people generally want to do the right things. And sometimes um, when you talk about education, they need to know specifically what the law requires of them. Um, and so we can do that with the warnings. Commissioners can do that at uh, community meetings and with flyers and the other things that you do uh, in the neighborhood and community as well. I'll go back to my days when I was an ANC commissioner. Uh, one of my goals was to make sure that everybody moved their trash cans in after trash collection, right? Because we talk about what the what the trash collectors do to the trash cans, right? But if you leave your trash can in the alley all week, what do you think is going to happen to it? It could be rats. It could be cars moving into it. It could be it could walk away with a contractor that's working on the house. To uh, all of those things happen, uh, but some people don't know that they're supposed to move it immediately after it's collected or by the next day. What's the rule? By the next day. Uh, by, tell me again, Chris, by 6 p.m. that evening. Okay, so that's a piece of education that we can get. Some people don't realize that you shouldn't stack your trash up so you can't close the lid. So we have to help them with that piece of education um, as well. Uh, you bring up a good point about pet waste. Uh, pet waste, uh, the, what do they say about the, what are those rats called that we have? Norway. Norway rats. They need water, they need food. You know the food they really like? Pet waste. Uh, so there's more public education uh, that we have to do uh, around that as well. Some of it is on the private side, some of it is on the public side. But we're talking so much, we're not going to get to see uh, the new tools. So let's get started. Thank you, everybody. You gotta get to the other side, Hold on, sir. Hold on. Everybody good? No. You all right, Doug? Hold on, hold on. Just point to the hole for me for a second, sir. Where's the hole? Where you at, Doug? Hold on. We just want to get right. Am I good? Yes. Any 